Hello YouTube, welcome back over to Gaming House, and today I'm going to be giving you a tips and tricks video, showing you some of the stuff I've learned from Rainbow Six, uh, some stuff that might not be common knowledge, it might be common knowledge, it might be stupidly, like, common sense stuff. Some people might not know it though, so hopefully this video will help out some of you out there that are playing Rainbow Six Siege, and if it does, feel free to drop a like. Check out some more videos on Rainbow Six Siege and all that, and please uh, enjoy what I have to share for you. First up, we're going to go ahead and talk about Capkin, and then we're going to talk about some shotgun usage, as well as a little bit about the nitro cells. Now, for those who don't know uh, from Capkin, his special ability is using booby traps. And booby traps, pretty noticeable. Uh, if you, for whatever reason, can't see the huge laser that comes from them, Look for this big-ass drill bit that always sticks out on the other side of a wall. It's pretty noticeable if you start learning to look for it. Now, another tip to help, say, hide the laser is when barricades get broken, they release pieces. So you can either do this yourself, or hopefully the attackers could do it for you. Is when you, you can put a barricade, remove it, and I got lucky here and it kind of dropped. You can see it kind of hides the laser a little bit, so anyone's not paying attention, they might walk into it. After they say destroy a barricade, not uh, via breaching charges. Breaching charges will just destroy the entry to denial advice. Now, let's go ahead and talk about shotguns real quick. Uh, besides shotguns being generally good at uh, close range, they're also good for making holes in the wall for either you, you to use or for your teammates. Like as we're going to demonstrate here. See, now we got ourselves a nice little hole to kind of watch this stairway right here. Uh, they're pretty good at that if you want to work with your team to that, as you can see here with this pistol. Not very good with it. Uh, even though you could always use it to kind of make holes with any other guns that aren't shotguns or sit there and melee holes. I actually made a decently sized hole there. I was impressed with myself. But if you're looking for a go-to on making holes in walls... To either kind of be dirty. This is a very dirty tactic to make holes uh, at like prone level to like look down hallways. Uh, some really cheap ass shit that I don't like. But since everyone else uses it, might as well fucking do it too. And it's dirty. And if I see you do it, I'll hate you in party chat. Now, nitro cells. Nitro cells you can kind of serve, uh, save them and use them as a grenade. Or say uh, you need to get below this level here. For whatever reason, you can also use them to blow holes in either walls or in these right here and go ahead and make yourself some little holes. Uh, I'd recommend definitely holding on to nitro cells. Don't try to use them as booby traps unless you know a team's not going to pay attention to it, which is very, very iffy if they will pay attention to it or not pay attention to it. Uh, it'll work if you save them, though. Next up, let's cover some attacking tips. Uh, we're bringing Sledge with us to also cover a little bit about Sledge. Now, some drone tips. You have the ability to jump, in case you don't know. Uh, with jumping, though, it does have a cooldown timer. If you try doing six, uh, jumps in succession, as you can see, it has a little cooldown. Try to look out for these little narrow pathways. Uh, the drones are Those are meant for the drones to go through. Uh, little secret paths uh, that will sometimes go around things, maybe air ducts and other things. Now, with drones... They can fit underneath things, uh, not that, but over here they can, and it's great if you can try and get your drone not spotted, and they're not hunting it down to get into these locations, and possibly not spot the, not use the Y button to spot the enemies. Just keep the drone here alive, and you can actually use it if you're communicating with your team to call out enemy positions. And don't try not to use the spotting unless you like really need to, because then that'll that alerts the team to like, hey, I'm being spotted. There's a drone here somewhere. Also, with attacking, start learning where cameras are outside. Uh, they don't change as of right now. They always spawn in the same places, so uh, I'm a dumbass, and I didn't find one out here, but I know there's one out here somewhere. You can sit there and uh, destroy them, and then it'll help keep the defenders from knowing your location outside. Now, with Sledge, he's got this kick-ass hammer. It's got, like, a long longevity for it. Uh, I miss here a few times, trying to make a point. Uh, if you don't get a direct hit with the hammer, it'll only take off a layer of the wall. It's kind of embarrassing. Uh, almost as embarrassing as missing twice, trying to hit a wall. Uh, right here I get it though. As you can see, if uh, you don't get a full swing, you just take off a layer of the wall. Now it's important in noting uh, 
when you're hitting with sledge, you're kind of vulnerable there when transitioning back to your gun. Uh, the enemy can then shoot you, so it's important to start learning how to time your hit and back away at, uh, after you hit the wall. And here's this demonstration. I think we finally got like halfway through Sludge's hammer here. Another tip about attacking is you make noise when you're in the standing position. So if you go crouch, you make a lot less noise and of course a lot less noise also when you're prone. Another tip about stairwells is to kind of definitely take it slow upstairs. Uh, start aiming. You can start looking underneath what would be barricaded areas. And a helpful, say you're on the attacking team, a helpful mid strat is uh, after you've, say, cleared out some jammers and everything, don't forget you have another drone in your inventory after the preparation phase if they destroyed all the drones. And after you clear out maybe some of the materials and eliminated some enemies, you can deploy drones again to start going out and rekind the area. Like, if you get into the building, uh, set up a little safety circle with your team and deploy a drone out there to start locating the enemy team and the objective if you haven't done that yet. Or at least if you have a good idea, locating the enemy is going to be, like, crucial. Right here we got our girl our IQ. Uh, IQ has the ability of this scanner that detects both cameras, explosive devices, and various other things that the enemy might have that's deployable. But another hidden thing about this is that it can locate the bombs and also the secure area canisters in the other two game modes. And usually you'll hear her call it out. Right here we've obviously detected something. It's a little odd because there's nothing. Usually just sitting in the middle of the room and boom, it's a bomb. So for whatever reason you haven't found the bomb, uh, either they denied the, they destroyed them all, Jammers got them, or it's just way too big of an area, such as like Cafe Russia or the airplane sometimes. Or not the airplane, but there's another one that's pretty big. Uh, bank. Bank's pretty big. Right here's a camera also. We destroyed that. So she's useful in that aspect. It's very situational, of course, but it's there. Next up, we're going to bring a buddy Mute, talk about him a little bit. Also talk about some Defender kind of do's and don'ts. Tips, you know, like the video says. So now with Mute, he's got these jammers that, of course, have stopped drones, can stop breaching charges, but we'll get right into that. Your first job is Mute, starting off the round, should be this. You should be going out immediately and placing these jammers in areas that you know drones are going to come through. And this is a perfect example if you're on, like, an upper floor, place them all at the stairwells. Stop the drones from locating your team, figuring out where all your little fancy gadgets are set up. Stop them from doing that. Then go ahead and start reinforcing stuff. Now, another fun thing about this, as I mentioned, it'll stop breaching charges. Another thing you can try and do is position it to cover two walls. If you get it kind of positioned good enough, it'll stop charges on both of those walls right there. A careful thing to do with the jammers, though, is you want to set them down after they have been reinforced. As we're going to demonstrate here, if you place down a jammer that's kind of within close vicinity of the wall, and then someone or yourself puts it reinforced, it's going to crush it and destroy it, and now you're out of jammer. Now, for something, say, uh, holding positions and strategizing with something like hostage, you kind of want to be near the hostage. If the enemy team gets hostage and runs away, they're practically going to win. Uh, so you want to be in this general vicinity of the hostage, and whoever kills the hostage loses. If they down the hostage and the hostage bleeds out, the team that downed the hostage is going to lose, so maybe you want to do something dirty, like you use the hostage as a human shield. Uh, and another thing with defenders is, as I've been hinting at, is in being within the general vicinity of the objective. Sure, maybe you want to go out into the shower area here, uh, cover that area, maybe shoot a hole in the wall, cover the lobby. But in general, depending on the game mode, you want to be near the objective, either all in the same room or so, like maybe hostage. Or you want to spread out sometimes. Uh, I recommend staying on the same floor as the hostage. I'm not saying that like crazy strats of guys running off and doing random shit has, hasn't worked. But that's inconsistent. If you're running around doing willy-nilly away from your team, you may cost your team the game because you're not there to defend it. Or like hostage will just get away. Also being in the same room is also a bad strategy depending on the game mode. Say bomb defusal or secure area. You're on the same room, Fuse could just detonate a cluster charge and might end up killing you all. 
So you want to space out. Maybe not all be in the same room. Be, be in the same facility. Some of the crazy that go in the basement may work, may not work. Uh, sitting on the stairwell, definitely, it's definitely worked. It's something I've done. But with defense, strategize. More than likely try to stay on the same floor. Be within distance of the objective so if something goes wrong, you can be there. Coming up on our final segment, we are bringing Bandit with us to talk about barbed wire and, well, gadgets also, and also a special ability. Now, notice here, oh, look at that. Oh, that's good. You can deploy that. That you can. Deployable things have a kind of select animation that they go through, whether you can deploy it in an area or not. This goes barbed wire, Tachanka's machine gun, uh, barriers. Now, with wire, wire has a deceptive usefulness to it. It might not seem like barbed wire might be useful, but it's good at slowing enemies down. You just gotta know where to place them. My particular favorite place to put barbed wire is stairwells. Stairwells, you can uh, definitely slow people down. And it works, say, if you're in hiding somewhere. Say, in the room over to here or right there. You can hear them coming through the barbed wire. You can maybe shoot through the wall, get them. Or... Just at least like hear them and call them out like, hey, they're coming stairs. I'm a little behind on the audio here, but you can also use barbed wire for setting up the electrical traps that Bandit has. They can electrify the barbed wire that can destroy drones, injure enemies, possibly kill them as well. And they can also electrify reinforced walls. Now, unlike Mute stuff, this only covers one wall. So maybe use him in combination with Mute for great denial of breaching charges. Uh, there's also, if you're an attacker, you can also usually hear a wall being electrified and also the wires. And you can also see electricity. I stand here for a while trying to like see it. I swear I do see it a few times and I go crazy waiting for it. But that does it for the tips for this. This is just a small portion of tips uh, that I've experienced. Some of which I found. Some I didn't cover because some of it's not my own stuff. I figured out on my own. Uh, if you liked it, leave a... Leave a like, all that fun YouTube stuff, and as always, we're welcome to come back to the gaming house, more gameplay and commentary.